Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for another time in your presence. Lord, thank as you, we Lord. go to the study of your word, expand your word in our hearts and Amen. help us, Lord, to grow by your word. Amen. Grace Amen. to be the power of your word and not the era only given to us in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we shall be talking about a great trap. A great trap. And our Bible reading will be taken from Exodus 14, 1 to 14. Exodus 14, 1 to 14. In this Bible passage, it is basically the point at which the children of Israel left Egypt and where they were moving towards the promised land via the Red Sea. So I would want to specifically highlight some, some passages, but before then, let's um, read from our scripture. Let's read from the Bible that passage, Exodus 14. 1 to 14. That passage is key to what we are talking about tonight. So I read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before between Migdor and the sea over against Balsifo before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will add in Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, and the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. Five. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were torn, was torn against the people. And the Lord, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people from him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord had in the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with the eye and but the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea beside Piariots before Balzephon. 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there was no grave in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us from out of Egypt? 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should be, we should die in the wilderness. 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them begin. No more forever. Verse 14, the last verse. 
the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Hallelujah. So from the scriptures now, we, we have laid the foundation from what uh, uh, we just read. We see from that passage, Exodus 14, how God had planned to set the children of Israel free. He had planned that they go through a particular route. He knew that that route has, or is a close end on its own because there is a great sea on the road and route that place. There is no boat with which the children of Israel could cross over. There is no how they could have go through the sea crossing over, even without anybody running after them. And God chose that route for them. This is where you take. And this is the plan. As they are going through, Pharaoh will run after you people. And then I will have my way. Then I will destroy him. Then I will do what I needed to do to deal with Pharaoh. So if you look at it critically, in verse 2, God told them, say, speak to the children of Israel. This is where you go. This is where you encamp. Meaning that God had already planned everything out. He knew what he was going to do. He was carrying the children of Israel along. He knew what Pharaoh would do. And that was what Pharaoh did from verse 3. That was exactly what he did. And then verse 4, you know, when Pharaoh made up his mind to fall to the trap, <laughs> God had in his heart. Now, what are the lessons? The camping of the children of Israel by the Red Sea was a deliberate plan by God to get Pharaoh and to destroy him. God knows how to lay traps for his enemy. Pharaoh was one of such examples. When God fights for you, you will be frightened yourself because he always finishes his enemies totally. God always finishes his enemies totally. So if you look at it, Pharaoh and his host were destroyed totally. Pharaoh and his host were finished in the Red Sea because God had the plan sorted out. Pharaoh never saw it coming. He could imagine, how can somebody come with chariots, with horses, and run after people who are walking with leg, and up till when they got to the sea, before he could catch up with them. And then when they got to the sea, God slowed the children of Israel down so that Pharaoh could draw nearer then he unleashed another plan. He made way in the sea. The children of Israel went through. Yeah, Pharaoh was happy that okay, we'll get them now. We'll get them. He ran into the sea. And that was the end of him and his host. So there is always a grave danger in being an enemy of God. God is a wonderful friend, but an extremely dangerous enemy indeed. The best part of God is just to be God's friend. Anyone will regret being God's enemy because you can never you can never have your way by way of overcoming or winning the battle against God. God always wins. He knows the end from the beginning. He's a master planner and strategist. He knows you more than yourself. He created you. He has everything on his palm. He created heaven and earth. He has the map of the world. He has everything on his palm. We are just human beings, limited in knowledge, in scope, in everything. We are limited. So 
it will only be a grave danger trying to fight God, trying to be an enemy of God. And how can one fight God? Once you are moving against his plan, once you are moving against his instructions, once you are moving against his prophets, you are fighting God already. You are an enemy of God already. A lot of people disobey God and they don't see it as fighting God. <laughs> Disobedience is declaring war against God because the Bible says disobedience is as a sin of witchcraft. I mean, rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So, and disobedience, rebellion starts from disobedience. Not until you carry placard before you fight God. It all starts from disobedience. The moment you begin to disobey God, you are declaring war between you and God. Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. There is no one God cannot handle. He can use anything and anyone, anywhere to fight his battle and accomplish his aim. Whether a king, whether a president, governor, whoever, even a nobody, God can use anybody, anywhere, anything, anywhere to achieve his purpose. So if God has chosen to fight anyone, he can use anything to fight the fellow. As small as a fly is. He could send the fly to enter the person's nursery or anything and that would be the end of the fellow. So there is nothing God cannot use to fight this battle. So people often think they are not well connected enough. You know, when they seek for help, when they seek for assistance, when they seek, you know, to meet people, to get to an office, to get whatever, they just feel they are not well connected enough to get to that place or get their desire, a letter or appointment or recommendation. But they fail to remember that they have a God who made all people and all things. And the Bible says in Proverbs 21.1 that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He turns it with us whoever he wills. All you need to know is God. Once you know God, he will turn the king's heart in your favor. Once you know God, God will direct your step, teach you how to pray, tell you what step to make, and then lead you to who to meet. And then that which you want, you get it on a platter of gold. So when you have God, you have what you needed to land your dreams and desire. God will not, God will turn the king's heart in your favor in Jesus' name. In every area of life, all you need is God. Once you have God, you have everything. Because one with God is majority. Amen. Other people might be sounding, you know, like a crowd. But if you have God on your side, you have all you needed more with you and then you will succeed so the bottom line tonight is to walk and watch against disobedience walk and watch against disobedience make sure you are not being disobedient to god and his instruction on any side of life and god bless you richly in jesus name amen praise the lord you can unmute yourself now and let's discuss any question.